Hello, greetings to everyone. Today we'll once again talk about latencies in Linux CNC and more specifically about the network connection to a Mazer card. All Mazer cards connected via a network are ultimately subject to the interface and its latencies, i.e. its delays. Now let's imagine we have a system, a computer, and we've already optimized everything. We've adjusted the grub optimizer so that the servo thread runs smoothly. We've made certain BIOS adjustments to ensure the system runs stably. All good. But even after all that, I might still have high latency in the network connection to the Mesa card. At this point, you might start wondering, do I need a different PC after all? But today, I'll show you another option that could work and might be worth considering. I've prepared something for this, a few slides, and I'll simply explain what's given, what I did, and what the outcome looks like. So I've got this Lenovo Think Center here, a mini PC with a G440 TCPU. It's nothing special, but this system, as I mentioned, has a problem with the network chip. If we look at the details, there's an Intel Ethernet controller and it delays things so much that I'm getting a real-time latency to the 7i96 of about 522,000 nanoseconds. Julian mentioned in the comments of one of my previous videos that this might not even be the actual nanoseconds value, but we can still use it as a reference. Whether it's CPU ticks or nanoseconds doesn't matter for now. The key point is that we can compare it proportionally. So, Assuming I managed to bring it down to 250,000, that's a 50% reduction in latency. For this reason, let's not worry about the exact unit for now. The fact remains. On this PC, I can only run at 1 kHz maximum. This means the servo thread must be set to 1 million nanoseconds, or 1000 microseconds, the typical 1 kHz. If it's set any higher, the system doesn't work. It produces errors. As mentioned, everything is optimized, but the one issue that remains is this real-time latency of 522,000 nanoseconds from the 7i96S. Now the goal is to eliminate or at least reduce this latency. Typically, this value ranges between 100,000 and 250,000, not 522,000. Okay. So, we see that the system has only the Intel network controller, no additional network card. The goal is to bring the latency down from 522,000 to below 250,000. With this system, the only way to achieve that is to add a new network card, NEC. First, I check the available connection options in the system, aside from USB. We won't use USB, we need to connect via the PCI bus. This PC has an M2 slot underneath the hard drive. So I got myself a network card with an M.2 interface. The chip I used is the RTL8111F, as it has been shown in other systems to have low latency, less than the Intel chip. If you're looking to upgrade a system like this, make sure to check what interfaces are available. For example, don't buy a mini PCIe card if your system has only M2 slots, or vice versa. I installed the additional network interface, and under the SSD, you'll find the M2 slot. The module was plugged in, screwed down, and that's it. The cables were routed to the back, where the I.O. shield is. There was a second RS-232 port, covered by a metal plate, which I removed. The RJ45 connector fits perfectly there. After installation and booting up, the system immediately recognized the new network card. Using LSPCI, we can see the new controller, RTL8111. No additional driver installation was necessary. I adjusted the configuration accordingly. The original Ethernet controller is labeled ENP0, while the new interface is ENP1, which I now use for the Mesa card. Running a ping test shows significant improvements. Previously, ping times range from 0.24 milliseconds to 0.3 milliseconds. Now they are around 0.07 milliseconds to 0.08 
milliseconds. Latency testing confirms these results as well. I was able to reduce the servo period from 1 millisecond to 333 microseconds, which means the system now operates at 3 kHz instead of 1 kHz. The result is a stabilized and faster system. Of course, 1 kHz is perfectly sufficient for many hobby applications, such as milling or turning. However, if you're working with control loops, higher frequencies offer better precision. To conclude, if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and activate the bell so you don't miss any future content. A big thanks to all the Patreon supporters. Your help means a lot. See you next time. Bye. Oh.